Good morning, friends. This is Jen Espinosa Goswami joining you live for my uh, Facebook business, uh, personal page. If you're joining me live this morning, please give me some hearts, likes, or comments on here so that we can share this message. But I wanted to pop in this morning and share a special message about feeding the picky eater in your life, whether it's you personally or your kids. This is actually geared towards kids in particular, just because I have commented and connected with so many moms who are like, oh my God. My kid will only eat mac and cheese, hot dogs, or pizza. And if that's you, or that describes what your household uh, mealtime situation looks like, then this particular video is just for you. Plus, I have a special invitation at the end, which I would encourage you to stick around and hear for because it's really important as we go back to school that we feed our kids properly, not just their bodies, but also their minds. So, hi, thanks for joining us live today. We're talking about feeding the picky eater. And um, this was spurred on by a conversation I had in a Facebook mama mama's group. And I asked people, like, we're going back to school now, super exciting times, but I know for me personally, once back to school comes around, I pack my meals for my kids' lunches, and sometimes when I pick them up from school at the end of the day, the lunch bag is still full of all those yummy things that I pack for them. And part of that had to do with the fact that my kids don't seem to have enough time to eat their lunch. And this came up for a couple of other moms as well. But aside from the time aspect, maybe it's that my kids aren't liking what I'm packing them. Or maybe it's just that uh, they eat some of the foods and not other foods. Some other mom shared with me that their kids might trade certain foods or that there are particular restrictions in their kids' classroom whether there's an allergy, a nut allergy, a gluten allergy, that sort of thing. So they're forbidden from packing certain snacks for their kids because there's an allergy in the classroom. Regardless of what your back-to-school struggle is when it comes to packing your kids' lunch, please let me know in the comments down below this video. Do you currently or are you considering packing your kids' school lunch? Please let me know. I'd like to hear from you and what your particular struggle is or what you anticipate your struggles are going to be. I'm asking this because I'm designing a brand new, brand spanking new uh, back to school program called Superhero Lunches. And it's going to be designed all around not just a collection of recipes because you can go on Pinterest and Google and find a bunch of like healthy kids meal ideas and healthy lunch ideas for your child. I'm not going to just put together a bunch of recipes for you. I'm going to share with you this distinct and special process I use when it comes to feeding my health coaching clients and designing custom meal plans for them. So I'm taking those same principles that I use for adults and applying it to kids. Because to be honest, the school lunch system is a, a bit broken, right? We know that those lunches aren't healthy. Half the time they aren't tasty. And while a lot of changes have been made on the government level to make them healthier, packing a home lunch will save you so much, not just in terms of money, but also in terms of peace of mind as a mom or as a parent. Because we want our kids to eat, right? And sometimes we would rather our kids eat healthy than we personally eat healthy. I've seen this time and time again. And I know that if my kid is eating something healthy, it gives me a certain jolt in my heart that I don't feel necessarily if I'm eating healthy. My kid is my first priority, right? Like I'm going to make sure that they're getting everything they need. And that includes a healthy lunch. Unfortunately, um, I've heard some of the challenges my kids have. They go to school and they look at the lunch and they're like, that's gross. Or they buy it and they eat maybe two bites and then they're like, I can't eat this. It's a really unfortunate situation. And the last thing you want is when you pick up your kids from school or from daycare after school, what have you, you don't want your kids to be crabbing at you, super angry, tired, frustrated, hangry, all of those things. Hi, Beth. Thanks for joining us this morning. We're talking about feeding the picky eater, especially your kids. If you have kids or grandkids, other sorts of kids in your life, we all have kids around us, right? Hi, Lori. Thank you for joining us this morning. So first of all, we know that school lunches are not the healthiest, despite Michelle Obama's attempts to make them healthier. They're not the healthiest. I mean, they're, they're doing some things with whole grains and other things, but that doesn't mean that your kid is guaranteed to eat them, even though you're spending the money for them. So that's reason number one why to pack your kid's lunch if you're on the fence with it. Reason number two. So your kid personally or someone in your kid's classroom might have some sort of allergy. It is really hard not to find some sort of classroom that has either a nut 
a gluten or a dairy allergy. And while nut allergy is the only one that prevents um, any kids in that classroom from bringing foods that have nuts, like I don't think you need to avoid bringing gluten if you have a gluten allergy in your classroom, but it does present a certain challenge for those parents who that's a normal part of their kid's lunch. So um, it's really hard to pay attention to those restrictions and still make sure your kid is get, getting a balanced diet. So that's reason number two for packing your kid's lunch. You gotta be aware and um, cautious of those allergies in your kid's classroom or your kid's own personal allergies. I connected with a couple of moms who literally said, my kid has 20 plus allergies and I have to pack his lunch every day, regardless of whether I want to or not, because otherwise he won't eat. We don't want our kids to not eat because they get crabby and we get crabby and it's a bad situation all around. So um, reason number one was school lunches are not healthy despite attempts to make them so. Reason number two is all the allergies, right? Everyone has all the allergies. We need to avoid those kinds of things and be respectful of other parents and their challenges with their kids as well. Reason number three to pack your kids' school lunch. I mentioned earlier that we want to feed not just our kids' bodies, but also their minds. And here's why my brand new program coming up, Superhero Lunchbox, is a unique solution. So I mentioned that I'll be including recipes, I'll be including my three-step meal planning process that I also use with adults. But we also want to feed our kids minds. I had a great conversation with a wellness colleague the other day. She's a mom of four kids. And she was telling me that her beautiful, strong, independent daughter felt very um, low on self-esteem and was unable to tell herself that she's beautiful. I don't know if you are currently doing this or have considered doing this for your kids, but when is the last time you dropped a love note in your kid's lunchbox? And this love note... No this love note could be anything. It could be, I'm so proud of you. It could be, have a great day. It could be, enjoy these lovely treats that I've packed for you. It could be anything. I'm not going to tell people what to put in their kid's lunchbox. However, our kids are naturally inclined to feel positive unless they get beaten down at school. And by that, I mean, sometimes it's bullies in school. Every person I know has had a situation where their kid has been bullied. I personally was bullied for being morbidly obese when I was going to school, and it was almost a daily occurrence. But today, bullying is such more prevalent. Um, it happens online as well. Our kids are finding a hard time with feeling confident in their own strength and power and independence. And one of the ways you can pump that up is by encouraging them. And sometimes all it takes is a little note. So my brand new superhero lunchbox program is going to include recipes, three-step meal planning for any kind of situation, whether it's allergies, um, picky eating, that sort of thing. And the third thing is we're going to feed their minds and not just their bodies, which will include a love note themed to a particular superhero. And I love superheroes. I just released a program called Release Your Inner Wonder Woman. So you know Wonder Woman's going to make an appearance. And my own daughter is an amazing artist, so I'll be including her original artwork in the resources and tools you'll get as part of this program. Now, I did mention that we're going to talk about how to feed the picky eater. It's tough. I know. And a lot of the moms that I asked this question to about their challenges, they said, yeah, I pack a string cheese, a fruit, and a veggie. That's great, but that's probably not what you want to feed your kid for the rest of their life. Yes, some variety is called for. Yes, some different options are called for. The less variety you present to your kids, the less likely they're going to be um, a non-picky eater, right? Because the more foods we expose our kids to, the more likely they're going to be open and interested in other types of um, flavors, textures, what have you. A special side note, there are some kids who literally cannot tolerate different flavors and textures, and I'm not necessarily speaking to that audience, but as a general consensus, the more foods you expose your kids to, the more likely they're going to not be so picky in terms of their eating choices. And that's a fact. One of the challenges I had with taking my kids to school after... Um, they were eating everything at home. I mean, they had such a wide variety of choices and palate op options. It was amazing. We would eat curry. We'd eat tacos. We'd eat all sorts of things. My husband's Indian. I'm Mexican. Um, well, I'm not Mexican. I'm Hispanic. But, you know, we have a wide variety of options at home that are not your traditional, you know, sad, standard American diet fare. My kids used to eat it all until they went to school. And then they started becoming picky eaters. Because the school has a limited lunch menu, they have to plan months in advance, and I totally sympathize with that, but that doesn't mean that your kid needs to be in a rut of eating hot dogs, macaroni and cheese, and pizza 
every week. You can certainly switch that up, and there are lots of cool ways you can do that. Um, without sharing specifically what some of those ways are, I will say that the more foods and more flavor combinations you expose your kids to, the more likely they're going to say yes and get out of that rut of eating hot dogs, mac and cheese, and pizza all the time. So that's a win for you, not just in terms of them eating the lunch that you're packing for them, but also when they come home for dinner, you're not in a dinner rut. Raise your hand if, if your kids tend to eat different things than you and your partner does. I know this is a, ch a challenge for many of us. My kids don't necessarily like the same things. My teen was vegetarian for a while, um, doesn't eat beef. My younger daughter eats only beef, it seems. So, you know, there are challenges that way. But you don't want to become a short order cook. And the way to escape that situation is to expose your kid to different things during the lunchtime. Now, let's talk about convenience because I'm all about convenience and sometimes picky eating is a result of you just tending to buy the same things at the grocery store that you always do, right? For convenience purposes, maybe you have coupons for it, maybe you've got a good deal on it, maybe it's a, a Costco kind of package where it's huge and you can get a big quantity for your larger family. I totally understand that. That is just, that's just how it's going to work sometimes, right? You, you want to be convenient, prepackaged, that sort of thing, because it saves you time, doesn't necessarily save you money. What I would say to that is these bulk items are a great idea, but sample them first. So places like Costco, Sam's Club will sometimes offer samples, so you can try it out first. Places like Trader Joe's or Fresh Time might have smaller quantities of these things, which is great to try it out, and then once you realize it's something that your family wants to keep doing, then you buy the bigger packages. The caution with that is it's very tempting to go to Costco, Sam's Club, and get like 50 kinds of different pretzel sticks. At the end of the day, if your kid is only eating five or 10 of those 50 packets, you're wasting a bunch of money. You're in a situation where you're gonna have to waste food because are, do you throw them out? Do you give them out? What do you do with those things? I can't tell you how many times I've gone to buy a new protein bar and try it out because sometimes there's a new product that works for us and I wanna sample it. And I still have the protein bars on my counter because they're gross and I won't eat them and my kids won't eat them. So we all run into these waste situations. <coughs> Excuse me. So when it comes to convenience, here are some quick ways you can make it convenient for not just you, but also your picky eater. So, you know, if you do end up getting those huge containers from Costco, can you make them smaller? Like maybe it's not prepackaged things where you're having a lot of food waste, but it's a big container of cashews. Can you put those in smaller baggies and put them in a grab-and-go container so your kid can literally pre-select what it is they want? There's option number one. Option number two, can you repurpose that into something else? I'm a big fan of repurposing, not just content that I deliver to you. I'm also a big fan of pre-purposing or repurposing food items. So if you have veggies that are, you know, rotting in the bottom of your crisper in your fridge, if you have um, breadcrumbs or other things or chips, is there some way you can repurpose things? If you have yogurt that maybe is not terribly fresh, but is not yet stale or, um, moldy or whatever. There are lots of ways you can repurpose foods so that you can still appeal to your picky eaters without wasting things. Um, so those are my tips I have for you today in terms of picky eaters, the kids edition. And now I have a special invitation for you. So I mentioned a couple of times that I'm creating a brand new program called Superhero Lunchboxes or Lunchbox Solutions. I haven't yet solidified the name. If this is something that interests you, if you know that you're going to be packing your kids school lunch um, in the coming fall when they go back to school, regardless if it's every day or occasionally, sometimes our kids will eat school lunch most of the time, but sometimes they hate the food so they know in advance that they want a healthy lunch from home. I can help you with that. Um, if you're interested in the Superhero Lunchbox program, which will probably be completed by next week, then please comment below this video and I will uh, capture your information. I'll send you more details. I haven't yet figured out the behind the scenes of how this is going to work, but I know it's going to be an amazing program. It's going to help you with your biggest challenges because I have quite a few challenges that I'm already addressing and, and providing solutions to. 
and it's going to be a super low price point. So this will be a paid product, but it's going to be super low, super affordable, and it's going to solve all the problems you have. So before I sign off today, hi, Jean, thanks for joining. Before I sign off today, here are two things you need to do. First, in the comments below this video, let me know, are you packing your, your kid's school lunch this year? or considering doing it for the first time. Number two, what is your struggle with that? And number three, make sure, I said two, I meant three. Number three, make sure you comment down below this video if you want to get information and details on my brand new Superhero Lunchbox program. We're feeding not just your kids' bodies, but also their minds because we, we as parents are concerned about our kids' whole health. And that's the kind of solution I want to propose for you. Thank you for joining me live this morning. This is Jen Espinosa Goswami. Let me know your questions or comments or PM me and let's, let's have a conversation about what your particular challenges are. Thank you so much for joining me live this morning and we'll talk soon. All right, bye-bye.